It wasn't a decision. It came with me. Uh, for as long as I can remember, as a little girl, I've been singing. It wasn't have, having to learn to be it or wanting. When I was just a little tot, I was always singing. Um, what sort of music did you like as a teenager? Mm, as a little girl, it was pop because that was the radio. I mean, you're influenced by what you receive. That was uh, the Maguire sisters and a lot of uh, the group singers on radio at the time. Then as a teenager, it, it became blues and R&B because that was basic and country and western. Yes. Who were your first rock heroes? A rock heroes, I would have to say, becoming knowledgeable about music at the time of realizing that was the Stones and the Beatles. Uh, do you think that you had any particular influences? Mick Jagger, because I liked not all of what he said, but what he insinuated, because most of the songs I took of his, I had to change a few lines because there were things that I wanted to say as a woman and things that he could say like as being a man so um, but I liked his style his energy and his, um, the projection in the 60s uh, rock was rebel music the Rolling Stones Bob Dylan and others wrote and recorded outspoken lyrics that urged sweeping social change what is the rock message today I think it's a lot of fun because if you want to talk about what Prince says it's a little bit over the top yeah. I would say that Mick is still in the ballpark of just giving you a good party song, good party music to get you going. Talking about hot women and, and uh, if you're getting ready for a party, Mick Jagger's music is the get you going type of music. Is it true that today's songwriters argue that romance isn't as important as material values or sex? For example, uh, Madonna in her hit Material Girl or your What's Love Got to Do With It? <laughs> <laughs> Do you dare compare the two? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's love got to do with it is a bit more profound. Material Girls is more of a fun song. Yeah. I mean, any girl will say, oh, I would love to find a guy with money and to buy me presents. What's love got to do with is a bit of a statement because love has everything to do with it. It is definitely a foundation, a, a spiritual connection that makes peace. Also, it is... Uh, the change in the world. People don't get so hung up on it anymore as they used to. They feel that it can be secondary in some instances. So I think that the song is a much stronger, meaningful song than Material Carol. Some people say it is much easier to get noticed in the UK. There are a number of influential and widely read pop music weeklies that cover every facet of the British pop scene. BBC Radio 1 welcomes new bands, and Disc Jock is a free-to-play any record that strikes their fancy. Is there still a British invasion taking place in the USA? I don't think... We're only speaking of opinion. I don't think the, the front of the question is true, which was um, it being easier to make it in Britain. I find that the British audience listens, and they accept the performer for its value. Value as a singer, as a vocalist value as a performer. You're only accepted if you're good. <clears throat> um, there's been, if you sort of scan the magazines, uh, announcements of different performers that has come and tried to get the British audience to go crazy simply by them entering the stage because they had a hit record. It just doesn't happen. That happens in America. So the front of the statement isn't true. I think the influence of British music is still very prominent in America. Why do you think this is so? There's something about, I call it a kind of mystery because of the culture. The culture is, um, the British people are extremely conventional. They hide. I, I hope that I can verbalize this properly without offending anyone. You don't always know what one is thinking or feeling because it is basically hidden. The British people are basically let you see what they want you to see. So they put it into a song. So what is instigated, you kind of get, because you don't know exactly. So it's leaving a lot to the imagination, which I think has a lot to do with us being attracted to the way the songs are written, because you don't exactly know what it means. But because it's coming from so deep, it sort of gets through with a different meaning. During your career, you mainly sung material written by other people. Do you regret not having written more of your own songs? I only wrote of... A hometown, Nutbush, which is a, I, can, I think you can call it picturesque of my past. It's a cute little community town. I, 
that is the only song that I've written that I'm proud of. In the past, <coughs> I was limited in my idea of uh, what I wanted to write about because there wasn't very much excitement, so I wrote a lot about what I was learning, reincarnation and different spiritual aspects that, was taking on, that I'd taken on in my life. After that period, meaning in the last 10 years, I've simply been experiencing fun and freedom. I think what you can look forward to is when I do finally do a research of my writing, it will be different from what I had written in the past. But at the moment, I haven't started. I haven't started up. I have not felt the freedom to be able to write of my experiences. Uh, what about your relentless touring? Isn't that very hard work? It's really healthy for me. I, um, there's a difference in how I feel when I'm traveling and when I'm sitting still. I've been doing it for such a long time, it has become a part of my life. It gets a bit hectic depending on where I am, you know, like there's different parts of the world that's more stimulating than other parts. Well, do you have preferences about the countries you play in? Europe is my favorite. So uh, Europe to the States? To the States or to, or to Australia or to um, um, uh, different other parts of the world. Of um, the contemporary musicians, which are your favorites? Mm, it's very hard to uh, to express myself there because I don't remember um, artists as much as uh, I remember music first, artists second. I cannot say at the moment that there is um, any preference. Is it true that many older fans find new rock bands hard to take? Uh, heavy metal, for example. Old fans that are, you know, not accustomed to this type of music. Um, does this type of rock appeal almost exclusively to male teenagers? And uh, is it true that it tends to treat women as temptresses? I, my attitude about that is because it's very hard for me to speak for the public. I've learned that. Um, people hold on to what they like. They discard what they don't. Um, I think there are a lot of people that still hold on, that like heavy metal, like a bit of what is going on now, but it isn't all of what they love, and which goes on. It's the same as with me. There are still a lot of Ray Charles, Sam Cooke songs that I, I still happen to like a lot, but then there are a lot of Madonna and uh, a lot of the, the, the female singers that I like as well. But it's like liking it with different emotions, you know. Yeah. Uh, some people say that one of the prime functions of heavy metal type of rock, is to irritate parents. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a rebellious world at the yeah. moment, so I think psychologically that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> With your album, Private Dancer, uh, you won three Grammys for Record of the Year, the Best Pop Female Vocal Performance, both for What's Love Got to Do With It, and Best Female Rock Vocal Performance for Better Be Good to Me. And after a phenomenally successful last 18 months, have you really promised yourself the whole of 1986 off? Not even the half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself at least three months of it, because yeah. I do have to start the album in 86. In, uh, and after about three months, I will sort of be working, uh, receiving songs, etc. then. But uh, I think even it will probably be late 86, 87, before I can promise myself a year off because there's still a lot I want to do. There has to be another album. There are movies coming in at the time. So uh, I, I cannot. Well, you received acclaim for your performance in Mad Max 3. Do you see your future as being in the movies? Um, yes, absolutely. I was very proud of the job that I did for my first straight, oh, first straight drama. And I think I did tremendously well. And I was also complimented uh, from the producer and the director. Um, I simply want to do it because I've, I've been singing 24 years and there's not much more I could do with it unless I decided to learn opera or to decide to sing jazz. So that is why the, 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 the film is more important. It's because it's new. It's something to master, to conquer. It was very nice talking to you, Miss Turner. You're welcome. And I wish you all the best in your career in both music and films. Thank you.